This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Motorola Zyboard 8.2. It's available now on Verizon. It's an LTE honeycomb tablet that measures 8.2 inches, a kind of unique size. And we're going to take a look at it now. So this is the Motorola Zyboard 8.2. This is available on Verizon Wireless. It's not available as a Wi-Fi only tablet. And it's interesting because it has an 8.2 inch display, hence the name. Now 7 inch tablets are common, 10 inch tablets are common, but 8 inch tablets not so much. The Vizio 8 inch tablet is about the only one with its more 4 by 3 ish aspect ratio and this one sticks with the standard honeycomb 16 by 10 aspect ratio which means you get a full 1280 by 800 pixels on the display just as you would with a 10 inch tablet. From a looks perspective it's unique, it's interesting, it's kind of macho and droidish because well it is a droid tablet and it looks just like the 10.1 Zyboard, only, well, at 8.2 inches. If we take a look at the sides, you can see you've got a rubbery coating here, feels durable. There's your speaker hole. Here's your micro USB port, your micro HDMI port, and this is where your SIM card slot is right here. It takes a micro SIM, just like the Zyboard 10.1 and the Razer on Verizon. And there is no spot here, no blank, for the micro SD card slot. It does not have a micro SD card slot. Along the bottom edge, nothing at all. Just nice pretty curves. But if you look at the back, aha, you know Motorola likes to put their controls in interesting places. This is your power button and these are your volume controls. Now with the Zyboard 10.1 they put them on the side on the edge but that was okay because your hands just rest right on the edge and power button and, and the volume controls are right under your fingertips that way. Granted they could use more tactile feel. But this is just well plain a little bit strange. Here we've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and this is the IR blaster port because just like the 10.1 this has an AV remote control with an IR port and up top so obviously you're going to be using this one in portrait mode versus the Zyboard 10.1 which has it on the long edge. And on the back, again similar to the 10.1 but a few differences. Here's your 5 megapixel camera with LED flash and you've got the back panel here, aluminum, very stiff, very rugged, nice feeling tablet, feels sturdy, feels like quality, also very thin, about a third of an inch, quite light, and we have these funny little uh, teeny torque screws, there's like T1 or T2 torque screws, and they actually are real screws, they're not just visual rivets or something like that, I unscrewed them, and there's a little bit of blue goo that holds them in place, and the back panel still doesn't pop off easily, probably because it has some black, or some goo on it too, uh, and since it's a review unit, well, we didn't want to destroy it. But here in comparison, here is the, the Zyboard 10.1, and there are no screws whatsoever. Now, God knows how you take this apart. I don't know if this is a compression fit for this aluminum panel here, but they didn't see a need for screws here, so it's a little bit strange, different design there. And here we've got the Zyboard 8.2 and the 10.1 together. You can see the size difference. So kind of a just right size if you're Goldilocks, right? Sometimes a 7-inch tablet is just maybe a little bit too small. Here we have the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus, so you can see the difference. And if you find web page text a little too small, something like that, but the 10-inch tablet obviously is not as portable, well, there's the 8.2 for you. So let's take a look at the specs of the Zyboard. This runs Android OS 3.2 Honeycomb. We expect it will get an upgrade to Ice Cream Sandwich Motorola, so they're working on that. And it runs a pretty vanilla implementation of, of Android, so there shouldn't be a whole lot that stands in the way. There are some third-party apps added on by Verizon and Motorola, but the OS itself is pretty much standard, and the widgets are just stock Android widgets. Nothing customized there, no integrated Moto Blur or social networking, anything like that. You know, it has the 8.2-inch display running at 1280 by 800 resolution. And that means that things are, icons are a little bit smaller. Text, say, on your settings menu is going to be a little bit teenier, but it's still viewable. You can see right here, the words are fairly small, but definitely legible. And considering the fact there are some 7-inch tablets that are sporting this resolution, now it's not too bad. This has a 1.2 GHz dual-core TI OMAP CPU. That seems to be the favorite for, for ice cream sandwich and for tablets right now, and even some smartphones like the Galaxy Nexus runs on that CPU. And it does pretty well in benchmarks, just like the 10.1. Not quite as fast as the 10.1, perhaps they're not pushing this as aggressively given the relatively small casing and the smaller battery inside. We get heat dissipation issues as well as power issues there. And speaking of, of casing size and battery capacity, that's one of the big differences between this and the Zyboard 10.1. This has a 4000 milliamp battery. That's not a bad capacity and we're seeing it run between five and six hours on a charge uh, and that depends whether you're using LTE or not. Believe it or not, LTE can use more battery power than Wi-Fi. 
But the Zyboy 10.1 has a 7,000 milliamp battery, which is absolutely humongous. So you're obviously going to get longer run times with the bigger Zyboy 10.1. So there's a gig of RAM. It's available in either 16 or 32 gig storage capacities. There is no micro SD card slot. It does support USB host. And here we have the, the old Motorola USB host cable. I'm not sure that's available anymore. They sold it as a camera connection kit cable for the Zoom, but any USB host cable will work. A USB on the go cable. Micro USB to full size female USB over there. Make sure it's a host cable, just not a little adapter connector thingy. And we've got a 32 gig flash drive connected and played a little sound when we plugged in. Happy little Motorola. You plug something in sound and we'll take a look at our file manager here and see what we see. So we've got our flash drive mounted. I'm using Android Explorer. You can use any file manager you want. I'm looking at the contents of the flash drive and I've got some movies on here so we'll just try one. It's an MPEG-4 video. Now we'll skip ahead to something a little bit more exciting. So it's playing just fine off the flash drive. So that's a handy thing to have since there is no micro SD card slide. You can actually use things like flash drives with your little adapter cable and carry a whole lot of movies around, obviously, say on a 32 gig flash drive like we've got here. Also works with mice and keyboards too, the USB port. But you probably want to use a Bluetooth one. In fact, Motorola right now is discounting their original, really lovely Bluetooth keyboard because they've come out with a new version with an integrated trackpad. And you can get that for like half price and they throw in the mouse for free too. And now while we're here, we've also got a 1080p high profile trailer loaded MPEG-4 format. H.264, so you can see how it plays high profile 1080p content. plays perfectly well. Of course you probably don't want to play 1080p to the internal display because it doesn't support that resolution. You're just going to scale down, but it does have that micro HDMI port so you can output this to a big screen, to your HDTV, even to an HDMI compatible projector. In terms of synthetic benchmarks, the Zyboard 8.2 does pretty well. It gets a 2822 on Quadrant, 56 on Linpack's multi-thread test, 5555 on, on Tutu, and Sun Spider, a very good result, 8. That's, that's not quite as fast as the, the Zyboard 10.1, but again, you know, we're in a smaller package here. And it certainly keeps up well with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus. But one of the things that really sets the Zyboard apart are, is the fact that it has Verizon LTE 4G. Verizon has pretty good national coverage already for their 4G LTE network and very good speeds. We average about 15 megabit per second down and about... 3 up according to the speedtest.net application with a pretty terrible 2 bar connection that equals about 110 dB signal for LTE and in good coverage areas we saw more like 22 or so for download speeds and about 6 up when we had say a negative 85 dB signal so certainly good stuff and that means for you people who are road warriors on the go and you're not always near a Wi-Fi hotspot or you don't have a MiFi or that kind of thing this guy has built-in LTE and you can use it anywhere Verizon service is available. If you happen to go out of an LTE coverage area, it does have 3G EVDO Rev A as well. Again, this is sold in Verizon stores. It comes with or without a Verizon contract, but you're going to be getting it from Verizon because it does have their wireless radios inside. Will we see a Wi-Fi only version like Europe has? They have it as the Zoom 2 and the Zoom 2 home media edition for the smaller guy? I, I don't know. Probably we will, but I bet you Verizon gets an exclusive for several months first. The 8.2 sells for $429 with a two-year contract and it's $599 without a contract for the 16 gig. The 32 gig is going to set you back $100 more. So this is not a cheap tablet, but carrier offered tablets rarely are. The Jetstream is certainly expensive, the Zyboard 10, the Zoom was never cheap. Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, you get the idea. 
In terms of what's different between this and the Zybor 10.1, if you're having trouble deciding, if you're not set on this more compact size, obviously we mentioned the Zybor 10.1 has longer battery life. It has a significantly larger battery, and it manages about eight hours for us versus the five to six hours for the smaller Zybor. And the other important difference is the active digitizer. The Zybor 10.1 comes with an active digitizer, and that means it's like a Windows tablet. It supports both capacitive multi-touch and an active pen, not a capacitive pen. In fact, here's the pen from the 10.1, and you can see it does absolutely nothing here because this does not have anything beyond the capacitive digitizer. So if you're looking forward to note-taking, drawing, that kind of stuff, you want the 10.1 and not the 8.2. Software bundle is also a little bit different. We'll take a look at that now, though some of those things can be downloaded here. The 10.1 has a lot of business-oriented applications. It's got Citrix, it's got GoToMeeting, it, it's got a virtual polycom, all sorts of stuff like that, which isn't here. Now, some of it, like the Citrix client, you can download using the Motopack app. You do get Motocasa, which is a really awesome application. With that, you can wirelessly access your Mac or your Windows PC and get all your files on and off of it. You can use your, your computer as a streaming media server, you can view photos, all that kind of stuff, and you can just grab files, Word documents, PDFs, all that kind of stuff, and you can do it wirelessly, which is pretty handy. If you do plug this in via USB, you have two options. Unfortunately, it doesn't use the standard USB mass storage or Android file transfer on Macs. You use that Motocast USB. The installer will pop up on your desktop when you plug this in over USB, so you can just run it and install it and that acts as your interface to copy files back and forth and it also has iTunes syncing which I know a lot of you like so you can sync your iTunes playlist everything that's not copy protected in your iTunes library can be synced with the tablet you can also install Verizon's VCast Media Manager I find it kind of sluggish and, and well I think the Motocast USB is, is a better option especially for those of you who want to sync with iTunes but that's up to you and you can also sync to Windows Media Player by the way under Windows in terms of other software that's loaded on here, not too much bloatware. We've got Blockbuster, Verizon likes to include that. We have Madden NFL 12, really fun game. Let's Golf 2 seems to be pretty inescapable these days, but also very popular. Evernote's bundled and so is Skitch. Evernote's pretty popular cloud note syncing application and Skitch is for the drawing part. It's funny that Skitch is bundled on this since it doesn't actually have the active digitizer for pen use, but hey, you can use your finger and draw or capacitive stylus too for that kind of thing. We've got the usual Verizon data counter widget. That's the only custom widget on the device, which is pretty handy to keep track of how much data you've used. You've got Verizon's account manager and Verizon's video service. Slingbox is also loaded on here. And for Office, we've also got Quick Office HD here. And you can pull files off the cloud here for MS Office stuff. You can create a new document and you can see your selections here, new Word, new Excel, new PowerPoint. Uh, this this isn't the most full-featured version. You can always upgrade if you want. So you've got Office in your pocket with this thing too. And of course if you're using a Bluetooth keyboard or something like that, an even more capable device. For streaming video you have plenty of options. Netflix Flix is also preloaded on this for those of you who have Netflix accounts. and got the ever capable YouTube streaming app on here plus this does it full Adobe Flash as well but the, the, the honeycomb version of the YouTube player is actually pretty awesome very high quality and a very nice presentation we'll take a look at that we're using Verizon's LTE connection right now with a pretty mediocre signal or load even faster so you get this wall of videos over here and you can pick whatever it is you want to watch let me just pick the video off the front page and you can see a really nice presentation here with related videos and all that kind of thing too. So it plays pretty nice. You don't have to have Adobe Flash. Of course this does have that as well. Remember we mentioned earlier that it has an IR blaster, that's this little window right here and it does IR control of your home theater equipment, TV, stereo, all that kind of stuff. And it works with a program that's included called Digit. And those of you who have used iOS devices might be familiar with Digit because they make a similar application that controls not just your home theater gear but also provides you with a TV grid. So Digit runs in portrait mode because the IR window is up top versus the Zybor 10.1 where it runs in landscape mode because the IR window is on the long side. 
So we've got our TV grid right here. It's showing what's on, and you can choose your cable TV provider, satellite, over the air, that kind of stuff. And you can also set location. You see right here we have living room, and you can add any other room that you want. And you can control your AV gear. Up here we have guide versus devices. Now I like the UI a little bit better on the Zyboard 10.1, honestly, because you can have them side by side at the same time, which is pretty handy. But you can see this is what the control grid looks like. It's a pretty basic one. It's not going to replicate every button on your device, but it works. And then you can choose between all the stuff that you've set up. Like we've got a cable box set up, a Samsung TV, Sony receiver. They support quite a few brands of AV gear equipment. If you go back to the guide, if you want to get description of something that's on. You can tap and if you hit the watch button it's going to control your cable box and switch to that channel for you. So it's pretty cool stuff and we're glad that more and more tablets are getting this feature right now because these guys usually spend a lot of time on the coffee table in front of the couch with you probably at night. And then we'll check out the web browser. There's a visual bookmarks. Still using Verizon LTE here with a teeny little one bar signal at the moment. Well, that was just fine, and we'll check out our Zyboard 10.1 video review to see how Dubby Flash plays. So the flash Let's playing just fine. Works. We'll pop it out to full screen 480p. Let's see if this works. So we plugged in the hard yep. drive. It made a little happy sound. Dolby flash is good. Like most full Android tablets, the Zyboard has dual cameras. There's a 1.3 megapixel camera on the front, works with Skype and uh, Google Talk video chat, among other things, and a 5 megapixel rear camera that actually pr takes pretty capable photos and decent video, too. Definitely a step up from the original Zoom's camera. LT reception on this is decent. Tablets are generally pretty good. We find the Zyboard 10.1 does have better, stronger reception, though. More room for an antenna certainly can help with that. If you're trying to decide between the two and the size either one is going to work for you, I would recommend the, the larger 10.1, not just because it's bigger, although that's pretty nice if you want to watch videos and stuff like that on it, but you get the bigger battery, you get the active digitizer with the pen, as well as somewhat improved reception and a little bit faster synthetic benchmarking speed. Experientially, they both feel reasonably fast, not super lickety slick lightning fast. Probably knows some improvement in, in perceived performance with ice cream sandwich. So that's the Motorola Zyboard 8.2. It's available now on Verizon. It's Motorola's second generation honeycomb tablet. We'll get ice cream sandwich at some point. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.